So I was really, really such a mess when I came to the Lord. I mean, uh, I spent 12 years of my life in prison for murder. Uh, I was a warlord in a very, very big gang in South Africa. I was addicted to sure. alcohol. I was addicted to pornography. I was so addicted to prostitutes, I opened two escort agencies. I mean, I was really, really just so lost because I kept on trying to fill this emptiness inside of me that I couldn't understand. I was trying to fill it with porn and violence. I was so addicted to violence. I was so lost in the world seeking my identity that could just never be filled. Yes. And because I was hurt as a child, I just knew in my life there's not a soap strong enough to wash the dirt of you from the hands that you are supposed to trust the most. Absolutely. So when I came to you, I was so lost and broken that it was impossible for me. In my flesh, there was not a way that I would ever get to Jesus. And when I experienced at your house was that unconditional love, that without judgment, without condemnation, which was weird. It was like, you know, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop because when is this man of God going to attack me about my sin? Yeah. And, you know, my son, and the more you spoke to me with love and respect when we met each other, it was like, this is weird. And I was trying to scare you all by my lifestyle. Yeah, I, I kept that. on blurping things out to you. And I was like, basically, but it was the love and grace of God that not just changed my life, but changed my future, that changed my identity. People judged me for who I was and what I did. Yet with you, uh, the moment I entered your house, from the word get-go, it was just love, 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 love. No, okay, um, I remember when you came um, to our house almost like it was yesterday. You know, that day I was quite rushed. You know, a lot of people think they need to be super amped, prayed up, and almost like a bit of a monk, you know. Yeah. You know, um, kind of isolated from the world and just tapping into that power so that you're ready for that moment. Yeah. But one of the things that, I, you know, I found at that day was that I, I felt at my lowest, but just because I was willing to obey what the Holy Spirit was saying and doing, yeah. um, God was able to do in your life what he's wanted to do. Oh, hallelujah. You know? Can you share with us just some of the things that, that, that God healed you of? Oh, yeah, and then, man. And then oh, absolutely. Kind of, what was the you know? transition right after that? Oh, when I came to your my, my septum was snuffed away, man. I, I, six and a half, seven thousand rand of cocaine a week. That, that, that was a... That was my last time, and then it was Dacha, and I was addicted to morphine, so my skin was busy popping. I was a full-blown diabetic. My sugar averaged 22 to 28 on a good day with insulin. But my heart was failing because I, I was diabetic and I had heart pressure so problems. I already, yeah, my heart was busy failing. Sure. And um, <laughs> as you know, you met me after my heart attack. You know? yeah, so that's right. I came because I heard that you and you prayed. You know, people healed. healed. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, I think you prayed for my father, and my That's father right. had a back uh, problem, yeah. and uh, he was willing to drive from Nelspruit to here, so yeah. you could pray. And you prayed on the phone for him. So That's right. my dad, in his good conscience, said that I must go and see <laughs> yeah. you. And I think you yeah. were expecting a Christian at that stage. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, yeah, it was awesome. So. When I came to you, my back was broken in 18 places. I used to, that's how I got addicted to morphine because my L3 and L4 was fused together. Um, a guy thought it was good to drive over me with his bucky. And uh, so I had that back pain and that, that was all gone and disintegrated. My hands sure. was arthritis. I, I couldn't move my hands, you know that. I couldn't yeah. close my hands. And um, my heart was completely failing. It was busy going. Already had two heart attacks at that stage. Uh, and then my liver was just the biggest problem. So my skin was a mess, my body was a mess. I weighed 220 kilogram. And uh, a man or a son of God that knew his identity in Christ prayed for me. Yeah. God gave me a new heart. He gave me a new liver. He gave me a new pancreas. I never had back problems after that. Back completely healed. <laughs> And no, gone Jesus. addictions. I didn't have withdrawal symptoms. I didn't have the little tits. I didn't have anger in me. For three weeks, I cried like a little girl. I thought, oh man, what's happening to me? Because I just had no anger in me. I had no, I had no more hate for the world. I, I, crazy. I never looked at a woman in a way I shouldn't again. Sure. I never touched a cigarette, never drank after that again. Mm -hmm. I got rid of everything that I bought with blood money, everything, every pornography. I, I think I destroyed over 10,000 movies, which was my own stash. Wow. Sure. Got rid of all my medicine. And I've never, my blood pressure has never gone over 120, over 80. I've lost 60 kilograms. 
just by the grace of God. Yeah. I can't explain it any other way. It's just the DNA change. I mean, it's a physical change that happened is that. And they've tested me. My doctors, my friends, so you've met some of them. All those things, and this is how many years ago now? It's 2016. Five years, yeah. Five years. All those things, they're still healed, right? Everything yeah. is still healed. Everything. Right. On Everything top of the other miracles, right. but this, this, this <laughs> yeah. was the, big, the biggest miracle. I got, I received Jesus. Yes. Heaven, and I didn't get a half a measure or a baby Jesus, like, you know, baby <laughs> Holy Spirit. No, man, I got the one. That's the one right. that Paul speaks about. The one that, yeah, I got that one. Yeah. I phoned you and I said to you, look, my gang's coming after me. We need to talk. Yeah. And I'm trying to bargain with you two guns in <laughs> 10 days. And you kept on saying, stand in the world. And I said, no, man, I can't take the Bible to the gun. Psalm 91 is not enough. And then I, said, I think we bargained down to one gun in two days. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, eventually, you kind of like one. <laughs> well, and, God's uh, word one. That's yeah. so sure. <laughs> The argument stuck uh, that Wednesday morning of the 7th of September, my uh, gang did a drive-by shooting in the Lippo Street rank, and they fired off 43 shots, 15 hit me, three through my right arm, five into my chest, four into my stomach, two through my right leg, and the last shot by my best friend into my throat. Sure. And I phoned you, and I, I was quite calm. I said, Mark, I just got shot, you're going to pray for me. And you asked me, is it serious? I looked at all the blood and the flesh on my stomach, and I, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like... Because you sounded know. very calm. Yeah, I, I was, was so like, did you get shot in the shoulder yeah. or something? Yeah. You know? I was <laughs> so in love with Jesus, man. I can't, I can't explain that. I keep on telling people it's like breathing honey. Yeah, God just had you, man. Yeah, like, man, I, got I, was, you. I, got you. I was just in total peace and in love with Jesus, man. I was breathing honey. I was laying in honey. Uh, and obviously then, I don't know what happened on the other side of the phone, yeah. but I was laying here all broken. And uh, the taxi drivers picked me up and they carried me to the doctor's surgery room and two doctors were working on me and while they were working on me, the hole started closing and one doctor freaked out and ran away. <laughs> the second man kept on working and working and then he just said, oh God, this is not for me, these holes are busy closing and yeah. 40 minutes later I was uh, back at my motorbike. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, and that freaked them out a little bit, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it did. In, in, in fact, you know, when, when you called me, I, I immediately turned in my chair, and because uh, I was in the office. Yeah, huh? that's right. Yeah. And I literally did pray. I remember clearly saying, bullets disappear, bones be healed, a bleeding stop, be whole in air, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Absolutely. And I just started thanking God for it. Mm. I had a peace, and then I carried on. And... It didn't feel like very long. It felt like maybe five minutes or ten minutes after that prayer that I got a call from you again. Now the doctor phoned you. And and you said to me, Hey, the doctor wants to talk to you. Yeah. And I'm hearing you now in a different tone. Like <laughs> and I'm thinking, Well, okay. Okay, let me let me find out what the doctor wants to say. Yeah. And then the doctor told me you came in there bleeding and full of holes and now everything is is closed up and you must be bulletproof or you got some moody or whatever and then i told him no this is mm. this is jesus and he's still asking you need to pray for me <laughs> yeah. yeah and if i believe if i'm correct he's born again now he's that born doctor. again yeah? serving christ he's awesome he's amazing